Hello, everyone. This is North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth. Thank you for tuning in to our At Home series, celebrating the holiday season. We have a diverse slate of extremely exciting programs to help you get into the holiday spirit, including episodes celebrating Hanukkah, Christmas, and Kwanzaa. We hope you enjoy this special presentation, which includes a greeting from our town board, special holiday traditions, a book reading, and many more things. So now let's get started and celebrate the holiday season together. Hi, I'm Councilwoman Viviana Russell from District 1 of the Town of North Hempstead. And today I'd like to wish you a happy Kwanzaa and a healthy and prosperous new year. Hi, I'm Councilman Peter Zuckerman, and it's my pleasure to wish everyone a happy Kwanzaa and a happy new year. God bless you all and God bless America. Hi, I'm Councilman Angelo Ferrara. I wanna wish you all a happy Kwanzaa and a very happy and healthy new year. My name is Councilwoman Veronica Lurvey, and I am here to wish you the happiest Kwanzaa and a very happy new year. I'm Lee Seaman. I'm very happy to celebrate this year with you. And I want to wish you a happy Kwanzaa and a wonderful year for all of you. Hi, everyone. My name is Marianne Del Monte. I am the Town of North Hempstead Councilwoman for District 6. Happy Kwanzaa and happy new year. I'm Charles Berman, receiver of taxes for the Town of North Hempstead. Have a happy Kwanzaa and a happy new year. Hi, this is North Hempstead Town Clerk, Wayne Wink. I hope you and your family have a very, very happy Kwanzaa this year and a happy and safe new year. This is North Hempstead Supervisor, Judy Bosworth, wishing you and your family a very happy Kwanzaa and a happy and healthy new year. Mukika is the mat. Mizao, the crops. Meshuba Saba, the seven candles. Karawa, the candle holder. Kikombe, Cha, Umoja, cup of unity. The first day of Kwanzaa is Umoja. Umoja means unity. Umoja. Unity. The second day of Kwanzaa is Kuji Chagalia. Kuji Chagalia means self determination. Kuji Chagalia, self determination. The third day of Kwanzaa is Ujima. Ujima means collective work and responsibility. Ujima collective work and responsibility. The fourth day of Kwanzaa is Ujama. Ujama means cooperative economics. Ujama, cooperative economics. The fifth day of Kwanzaa is Nia. It means the purpose. Nia, purpose. The sixth day of Kwanzaa is Kumba. Kumba means creativity. Kumba, creativity. The seventh day of Kwanzaa is Imani. Imani means faith. Imani, faith. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in this video. For this project, we're going to spend 10 minutes and we're going to create this really cool Kwanzaa 
candle holder called a Kanara. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna just get right to it. Please use a blue painter's tape, some kind of masking tape if you have. Water cup, a flat brush. We're using some acrylic paint, all right. Um, all the primary colors plus white if you have. And some paper towels. I'm using watercolor paper, but you can do this on a canvas if you'd prefer, okay? So you can also do this with markers instead of paint or um, watercolor paint if you don't want to use acrylic paint. So to start out, you're going to take your tape and you're going to kind of like, this is about two inches off the edge from the bottom of it. And I'm making this nice horizontal line kind of, but I'm leaving about a little space between the left and the right edge. All right, this is going to be like the bottom part of the candle holder. And it is called the Kanara. So if I say that instead of candle holder, um, that's what that means. And then you're going to make another line, kind of as close you can get to the middle. All right, that line does not have to reach the edge of it, the paper. And then finally, you're going to make, an, you're gonna do another line with the tape, kind of like that. And that's the base for the candle holder. You do wanna make sure that the tape is nice and flat. Um, I also forgot to mention if you prefer to use like regular scotch tape you could try it with that you just have to be very careful because that tape might tear up the paper so masking tape blue painters tape is really the best option to do this project with now we're going to create the candles so there there are seven candles all right so we're going to i'm gonna i want the candles to be about this tall and you do want to make sure that you leave enough space so that way there's seven candles you can also have the candles maybe some are leaning a little bit if you want to be a bit artistic with it but as you can see the candle it must over it must go over that other wider um like tape that we had placed first down okay so the thing with this technique with the tape resist paint is wherever you place the tape um, we're actually going to paint over this, but wherever we place the tape, when we remove the tape, it's going to be all white. So that's why the candles holder is going to come out nice and clean. And that's because of the tape. That's why it's called the tape resist technique, because the paint basically resists the tape, <laughs> kind of. All right, so we've got about six candles right now. I'm going to add the last one. And then... Just taking the time and being careful and ripping it out. Sometimes the tip tape tape can be a little bit tricky, but try your best with it. Okay. And you do want to make sure that the tape doesn't go over that large uh, horizontal line that we first made. When you're done, go over the tapes that you had placed down just to make sure that they are nice and flat. Because actually, if they're not flat, paint will go underneath it. And that's going to mess up the whole um, technique with having it be white when you lift up the tape. So I want to make sure the tape is nice and flat. And then we're going to make those kind of like these little round um, cuts from the tape. Um, it doesn't have to be like round like a circle. We just don't want it to be straight. Okay. And you're going to add it just like a little bit off at the top of the candle. And that's kind of just like a bit of a flame you could say, right? So you don't want it actually touching the candle. You just want it to be a little bit above it. Not too much though. <laughs> uh, they don't have to be the same size. It's okay if they're different sizes, but have them be roughly the same size and don't have them be like too tall, unless you want to do that, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm just making sure I have seven candles. Okay, and we're going to add the last candle to it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just mix some colors. So this is a great project to practice mixing colors with. Okay, so we're going to mix different colors. It really doesn't matter which color you make. So you can have fun with this and experiment with it. And then we're going to remove the tape design and kind of reveal the final piece and everything. So we've got all the tape down. Now, if you're not done, take your time. Continue adding your tape, but you want to have something like that. Make sure you go over it again to make sure it's flat. 
And then once you know it's very flat, you're going to take your brush, make sure that you wet it a little bit, and then you're going to start mixing colors. Um, does not really matter what colors you mix. Does it really matter where you paint it? You can make a rainbow. You can paint it one color. It's really up to you. And you can also paint over the tape. It's not going to mess it up at all. So right now I started by mixing green. All right, I started by mixing the yellow and the blue. And then I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the green that it had made. So it's making a little lighter. And I'm kind of just going with it. I didn't really plan the colors that I was gonna use just cause I wanted it to be, you know, like a little bit more freeing kind of, and to kind of just see what it will create. So I'll just let you know to mix the colors. The So there's there's primary colors, which are yellow, blue, and red. And those are the three colors that you cannot mix from any other colors. And then you've got the secondary colors, which are colors that you can mix from the primary colors and you mix those two together. So for green, you've got yellow and blue. Purple, you've got some red and blue. And then for orange, you have some, uh, what is it, sorry. <laughs> for yellow and orange, for orange, you have yellow and red. Those are the secondary colors. And there's actually other you know, colors that you can mix, but we'll stick to just primary and secondary. So mix colors, um, add some white to them. You can do just primary colors. You can then mix secondary colors. Um, you can move the brush whichever way you'd like. The only thing you want to remember is to make sure that the tape is nice and flat. All right, so we're just going to make sure we color everything. You want to not leave any white space uh, showing because you want the only white space showing at the end is where the candle holder is. All right, so we're just going to color the whole, we're going to paint the whole. Um, canvas or watercolor paper, depending on what you're using. All right, so I'm, I mean, this is looking okay. I feel like you won't really be able to tell until the tape is removed because it's definitely going to look completely different once the tape is removed. So even if it might be looking a little bit strange or weird, I would say, you know, just keep going with it. Um, you're not, you never know what it's going to end up looking like. Uh, but that's kind of the fun part about it. You know, it's kind of going to be a bit of a surprise at the end. So that'll be fun. Um, so we've got about three minutes left. I'm mixing some more purples. And keep make sure that you're dipping the brush in the water. So that way it stays wet. If not, it's not going to really move the paint around much. And it kind of is basically not going to work. <laughs> All right. The brush needs the water to work and to do its work and its job and everything. All right, make sure you paint the edges and that you don't leave any white space showing. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. And I kind of like where I added the yellow and like the yellow with the white and the green. I think it's going to look pretty exciting. So now I'm going to remove mine right away, but I recommend that you allow it to dry for a good two minutes or three minutes um, and let it dry before you remove the tape. Um, I kind of know how to handle the tape, but you, what you would start by doing is by removing the like candles first. Okay, so you would make sure that this is dry. <laughs> if you need help, you can ask someone to help you with removing the tape. If maybe you're lifting up the tape and you see that the paper is coming off with it, that means that the water got underneath the tape. So I would recommend to just stop and leave that specific tape alone and move on to something else and then come back to it and then start removing it from the opposite direction. Okay, but look at how nice and clean these shapes are, like super nice. And you can use this tape for any, for like a lot of projects. As long as you know, like this is what it does, you can use it for just a lot of cool stuff. I really love working with Blue Painter's tape. And I mean, like, look at this. This looks just... Awesome. And we still have to take off the little flames at the top of the candles and stuff. Okay, so do take your time when you're removing the tape. Have someone help you if you need any help. Um, try to not lift up the paper with the tape. The whole point is with this blue painter's tape, it's actually not supposed to 
tear off the paper as long as water does not get underneath it. All right, so I'm removing the flames, but look at this beautiful painting that is coming out. Look at it, it looks so nice. Yeah, the background looks really cool too. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but yeah, you could definitely give this to someone as a gift or hang it up on your wall and it looks really cool, right? So thank you everyone for joining me in this video. I hope you enjoyed the project and I'll see you in another video. It was the first day of Kwanzaa and Kayla was sad. Her big brother, Kari, could not come home for the holidays because a heavy snowstorm had closed all the roads around his school. Kayla always missed Kari while he was away, but this was worse than ever. Now they would have to start Kwanzaa without him. Kwanzaa was Kayla's favorite time of year. She loved celebrating her African heritage and doing special things with her family. But how could she enjoy Kwanzaa this year if Kari was not part of it? Kayla tried to cheer up. After dressing in colorful African clothing, she began to set the Kwanzaa table. First, she put down the mukaka, a traditional straw mat, on top of the makaka, she placed a kanara, a Kwanzaa candle holder. The kanara holds seven candles, one for each night of Kwanzaa. A black candle in the middle, three red candles on the left, and three green candles on the right. The colors stand for different things, black for the African-American people, red for their struggles, and green for hope and a good future. Each night of Kwanzaa, families light candles and celebrate one of the seven Kwanzaa principles which are ideas that help people to be strong. The principles help to guide them through Kwanzaa for our practice all year long. There's a different principle for each day of Kwanzaa. Each year, Kayla and Kari would share the Kwanzaa greeting. Habari Ghani, Kara would say. The greeting is from, Swahili, from the Swahili language. It means what's happening today. Kayla would answer with the Kwanzaa principle for that day. Many Swahili words are used during Kwanzaa. Kayla sighed. It just wouldn't be the same without Kari there tonight. Kayla's parents helped her place fruits and vegetables on the makeka. The fruits and vegetables are called muzao. They represent the harvest and the importance of working together. Here is the corn, said Kayla. Do you remember the Swahili word? Her mother asked. Muhindi. Kayla answered. The Mohindi represents the children in the family. She put two ears of corn next to the other Kwanzaa symbols, one for her and one for Kari. There she is putting the corn. When the table was ready, Kayla's mother helped her light the black candle. Kayla knew that they would light a red candle the second night a green one the next night, and so on until all the candles were burning on the last night. There they are, lighting the candles. Since Kari was not there, Kayla's father greeted her. Habari Gani, he said. Kayla answered with the first principle of Kwanzaa. Umoja, she said. Umoja means unity. Kayla's father poured a few drops of water from the Kikombe Cha Umoja, or Unity Cup, to remember and honor their ancestors. At Kwanzaa, everyone drinks from the Unity Cup to celebrate family and community unity. Kayla and her family practice unity all year by spending time together as a family. Kayla especially loved family movie night. They would rent movies and eat pizza and popcorn all night long. Thinking about movie night made Kayla miss Kari even more. The next night, Kayla's father lit the black candle and the first red candle. He said, Kuje Ka Gulia, which is the second principle of Kwanzaa. It means self-determination 
were deciding what you want to be and do. Kaylin decided that she wanted to go to college, just like Kari, and studied to become a scientist. On the third night, the phone rang just as Kayla was lighting the first green candle. It was Kari. Habari Ghani, Kari said. Ujima, Kayla answered. Ujima is the third principle of Kwanzaa. It means working together and being responsible. One way Kayla and her family practiced Ujima during the year was by participating in a school's bake sale. The teachers, parents, and students all worked together to raise money for the community. The black candle, one green candle, and two red candles were lit on the fourth night. Kayla was really happy tonight. The roads were cleared and Kari was on his way home. The principal for the fourth night of Kwanzaa is Ujama. Ujama means cooperative economics or supporting African-American businesses. Kayla and her parents loved shopping in Tubman Square, where African-Americans sold handmade jewelry, hats, and clothes. The phone rang and Kayla ran to answer it. Hi, Karari, are you almost home? She asked. Kari explained that his car had broken down on the way. It would take a few days to fix. Kayla, she burst into tears. There were only three days of Kwanzaa left. Karari would miss everything. Don't cry, sweetie, Karari said. I'll see you real soon, I promise. On the fifth night, Kayla's mother lit the candles. Today's principle was not Nia or purpose. Kayla decided that her purpose was to be the best little sister she could be. She made Kari a special Kwanzaa scrapbook, telling him all about how the family celebrated this year. Kumba, or creativity, is the principle for the sixth day of Kwanzaa. After the last red candle was lit, Kayla and her parents made lots of decorations for the Karamu that night. The Karamu is a feast where families celebrate with friends and loved ones. Kayla made a flag using the Kwanzaa colors. It was black, red, and green, just like the candles in the Kanara. Soon there was a knock at the door. Kayla ran to answer it. Kari, she yelled as she opened the door wide. No, not Kari, but grandma and grandpa are here. Kayla was glad to see her grandparents, but she couldn't help being disappointed that Kari still had not arrived. She kept hoping that somehow we'd get home before Kwanzaa was over. There were many knocks on the door from friends and family. It was hard to be sad with so many people around. Everyone was enjoying the caramel. There was so much food, they had to have a separate table just for desserts. No one heard Kari at the front door, so he just walked right in. Kayla squealed with delight when she saw him. You made it, Kayla said, smiling. I took a taxi cab to a bus, he answered, just to see you. Kayla hugged Kari as tight as she could. Imani, Kari whispered on the last night of Kwanzaa. Tonight, all the candles glowed brightly. Imani means faith, believing in yourself and others. I believe in our family, Kayla said, as they opened their Zawandi, or gifts. Kayla knew that Zawandi should be handmade or educational. She gave everyone a photo of the family in a frame that she had made from old newspapers. Everyone loved their Zawandi, especially colleagues.